up, everybody? It's your boy, Ryan. And this is another Nootropics 20. This is also going to double as 120 on the Cortex Labs Nootropics podcast. For those of you that are listening, thank you so much for being here. Every shred of information we put on this channel is brought to you by sponsors. Our sponsors are our own stuff. Number one, we have a stack. It is called Cortex. Look, Cortex is the kind of stack you take when your brain is just like not functioning right, and you need motivation, and you need verbal fluency, and you need to be on point, and you need to focus, and you need energy two capsules of Cortex and you're done. It's so simple and so effective. Uh, right now, 31 bucks, livecortex.com. Just go buy a bottle, you will love it. Discounts on Cortex, coupon code five, F-I-V-E, will save you five bucks, taking it down to 26 bucks a bottle. If you need my help, if you wanna to talk to me over the phone and uh, have me sort of discuss with you your nootropics history, what your experiments have been, uh, help you to adjust those stacks, and then give you five to six additional stacks that'll work well for you based on what we talked about. And then have me work via email with you to refine and perfect those stacks so that you can just induce great states on cue. Get the Nootropics Consulting Service, that is what it's for. Uh, if you wanna bypass talking to me completely and you wanna actually take your Nootropics usage and understanding and inducing motivation and energy and focus and all the great things Nootropics do on cue at a higher level, by the Nootropics Masterclass. It is a video course where we teach you how to do that. Um, last thing, if you're a dude and you need to raise testosterone, look, a lot of you guys are thinking about it, thinking about pulling the trigger, not sure about it, you need to stop BSing, okay? I gotta give you tough love. It's gonna change your life. It is worth raising your test and we can do it. Go by the protocol at livecortex.com. And if you need a discount on either the Masterclass or the, Nootrop or the uh, testosterone protocol, Email me at ryan at livecortex.com. And if you're serious about doing it and upgrading your nootropics life and your testosterone state, I will give you a coupon code. Just email me and let's do it. Okay, uh, so we are going to talk about a lot of stuff. I got about 17 major things to discuss here. So here we go. Uh, person emailed in saying, hey Ryan, I'm pretty new to nootropics. What are three stacks, uh, four stacks rather, that you think are the best to start with? Um, it's hard. I mean, I think I've given multiple recommendations on this, so they might sound different, but I mean, I guess off the top of my head right now, I would say two grams per acetam, uh, 100 milligrams of alpha GPC, and a B complex, that'd be stack number one. Uh, stack number two would be 400 milligrams oxyracetam, 400 milligrams aniracetam, 100 milligrams CDP choline. That would be stack number two to start if you're like just, just starting and you're brand new. Uh, stack number three would be a very simple 300 milligrams of Alcar and 150 milligrams of Theocrine. Uh, stack number four would be uh, simply 100 milligrams of caffeine and then 150 milligrams of L-theanine. With this, you get a lot of the basics out of the way. You're trying paracetam, both the choline sources, two other racetams for three total Alcar, Theocrine, and you got the smart caffeine stack in there. That's where I would start. Um, if you're just getting into it and you wanna see, get a gauge for how nootropics are, are you know, affecting you. All right, next question. A little bit of a funny question. Ryan, do you use nootropics just to browse the web? <laughs> People ask me that kind of stuff all the time. Like, do you use nootropics to clean your cat's litter box? Uh, the answer is, I don't know, maybe and it would be aniracetam if so, and it'd usually be in just my morning supplement regimen if I'm gonna do that, just laying low, having a little bit of aniracetam with my B-complex, amino acid complex, and vitamin D and stuff in the morning, and salt. Uh, yeah, 500 milligrams or so, aniracetam. <clears throat> Browse on the web is like, you know, you, you're, you have to switch between tasks. You're switching between tasks. That's the mental activity you're doing, and aniracetam does help uh, me to do that and folks to kind of do that. Um, Next point, which is super ironic. I mean, I think this might've came through after I just posted this video about test and feeling better after not sleeping. Uh, guy goes, testosterone, having high test, <laughs> uh, makes me feel better after sleeping. Does that mirror your experience? Ironic that that came through right about then. Um, it, it does. The, the video we put out today, or was it yesterday? It, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it depends on when this goes out. Um, was about testosterone, it's not just about sex drive and libido and feeling masculine and whatever, being able to grow more beard hair and stuff um, and then being better at the gym and, and um, 
in terms of being able to put on muscle, lose fat, these kind of things. But it, it is also about making your body more resilient. Uh, there's a lot of sort of things that one might do that would count as insults to their body, where having high testosterone, the resilience from those insults, the response to those insults is uh, better and you actually feel better. So yeah, I mean, this has happened to me since, I wanna say across the 500 to 600 nanogram per deciliter total team mark, where things that would have me a little run down do not anymore. Um, my workouts at the gym are substantially more strong. I just feel stronger when I'm at the gym. Uh, I'm less fatigued when I leave. I still feel energy when I leave the gym, okay? That's like the primary mark that your uh, hormones are on track, um, particularly testosterone and adrenal hormones. Uh, next point, uh, Ryan, you mentioned that uh, somewhere in a podcast that 60,000 IU of vitamin D a day is the highest tolerable amount you suggest uh, being on that border. Well, um, yes, it, you know, if you go Google around, it's really a PubMed, I believe it's a PubMed study. Uh, researchers tried to test and to, to identify this, this highest tolerable amount of vitamin D. The RDA, by the way, is, I don't know what the RDA is, it's like 350 IU, it's so low. Um, and what they found was that on the high end of the vitamin D mark, which is somewhere around 90 to 100 nanograms per deciliter, uh, folks stayed, they went up to like 90 or so, and then stayed there and it did, it did not go higher, even after continuous vitamin D supplementation, as long as they were under 60,000 IUs a day. It, was, it wasn't until they went over 60,000 IUs a day in vitamin D where wacky things started to happen, like calcium buildup, and then the numbers going way over the threshold. So that, that is what you don't want. So I would say um, my personal recommendation on that would be not to be on the border at like 55 or 60,000 IU, because think about it, just over that threshold, you've got problems. So who knows, maybe your threshold is 55,000 55, um, IU a day. And to stick between somewhere um, in the 20,000 to 30,000 IU, uh, 30,000, yeah, IU of vitamin D a day. If you're a man and you're focused on uh, erection quality and testosterone, that's also the optimal range. Really 20 to 30,000 IU a day. That's what I would say. Next question, uh, does a meal in the morning blunt the effect of your nootropic stack? That's a great question. Uh, the, the short answer is yes, it will blunt the effect of the nootropic stack. Uh, and sometimes that is good and sometimes it may not be it may not be great. It may, it may not be as useful as it could be. In other words, it might be bad. It just may not be as useful as it could be. Um, most days I fast in the morning, and that's not because I'm trying to be like this super cool fasting guy. You know, um, it is just because that's how my body wants to operate. Then I go to the gym. Then I eat a lot after the gym, and then eat sort of a small dinner, and that's kind of what I'm doing, and it works for me right now. Um, but you know, yeah, in that in that in the time frames when I was eating in the morning um, just because I had to eat because I wanted to eat. One of the reasons that I was uh, recovering from adrenal fatigue and that, you know, f calories are pretty critical in, when doing that. Uh, yes, I would take a stack just after breakfast. And sure, the food would, I mean, you're really talking about, I mean, what, what I would postulate is that you are talking about absorption issues and potential material breakdown interacting with food and stomach acid, right? So if you take 10 capsules or something or six capsules and you got stomach acid being pumped out, digestive enzymes, this whole process, food is sort of intertwined with all the supplements that you're taking or the nootropics you're taking, then sure, there's going to be a blunted effect in terms of the efficacy of the stack. Um, however, so usually if you're trying to get the best effect from a stack, take it on an empty or light stomach, just not a full stomach. However, there's also a case for taking nootropics, you know, with food so that you sort of have something else there that is blunting the effects. And that is a good thing because number one, if you have your doses wrong and they're too high, that'll usually level that out to a substantial degree so that you can get better effects ultimately from the stack. And then there's the case, which is something I like to do and I think is important to do somewhat frequently, which is to take nootropics, but you're not trying to get this full effect from them. You're not trying to get this super stim effect from them. You're just trying to get 
a nice noticeable bump of a baseline. <laughs> that's like a phrase we should put on a coin because we say it so much. Uh, so that's my, my, my take on uh, that. Next question, really important question for you folks suffering with GABA issues, GABAergic issues. Ryan, have you actually uh, ever seen anyone take uh, uh, GABA-B receptor upregulators and have it help? Well, uh, it depends on what it might help and what the condition of the person was where they wanted to take uh, GABA-B. But the answer is yes. Largely in people with anxiety issues, uh, I have seen them take Fasoracetam to sleep for a considerable period of time. We're talking about like two to three months every every night with the exception of maybe one or one or two nights, kind of if they just skip it or forget it somewhere, they're traveling or whatever. And uh, in the end of that experiment or after a good degree of time, we're talking about two months or three months, uh, people report generally having less anxiety throughout the day, okay? So this is uh, totally anecdotal. Um, so, I mean, I can't give you any hard evidence on that, but from what I've seen, yes, it does, you know? It, look, it's very clear. If you are working on receptor functionality and making receptor functionality work well, that's really the target when you have problems. That is, that's, that's almost always the problem when you have some sort of issue that is related to brain performance or anxiety or depression or something. It, it, it's, it's receptor issues. Uh, Fasoracetam, as a good example, does upregulate GABA-B taken it long enough, you should see benefits. So, and I and I absolutely have. So yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, strategy to be in a better mood. <laughs> well, very general question, but I you know I can answer it. It it as it relates to serotonin. If serotonin is your issue, um, obviously adaptogens help to be in a better mood. Rhodiola, ashwagandha. Um, but you know as we talked about with Lucas from BrainX who uh, is the guy that is launching BrainX, a nootropic out of Australia. And we still need to support him, by the way, so go to brainx.me and get on the email list to get notified of the launch. If you guys would do that for me, that'd be really great. Um, and yeah, so we were talking about one of his hacks on the last podcast that we did in a video, it's episode number 118 of the Cortex Labs Nootropics podcast, was microdosing ciproheptidine. Uh, ciproheptidine is a 5-HT1A serotonin receptor antagonist. So it essentially uh, modifies the autoreceptor, suppresses the, the autoreceptor, I believe on the postsynaptic, um, postsynaptic neuron that says that recept that autoreceptor goes, hey, there's there's an, there's enough serotonin here or there's not enough serotonin here. Usually it says in, in a case where you've got a downed 5-HT1A or a desensitized 5-HT1A receptor, it says there is enough serotonin and therefore you don't produce enough serotonin, a lot of serotonin thereafter, because the brain, the autoreceptor is going, hey, there's enough of this. That's actually what happens when people, you know, you know take SSRIs for a while, because, you know, SSRI is an agonist on serotonin receptors. Eventually the autoreceptor starts going, hey, there's enough serotonin here, and uh, shuts down, and then you, you stop making it an adequate quantity. So the strategy for there is microdosing ciproheptidine. It's a liquid solution you can get from ideallabs.com. Just go Google ideal labs, I think it's idea labs, uh, ciproheptidine, and you will find it. If not, you can email me, ryan at lifecortex.com, and I'll give you the link to it. Uh, two drops of it, liquid solution, in water, an hour before bed, two nights in a row. That's going to suppress 5-HT1A, um, antagonize it for two, three days, and then what you get after that for, we're trying to figure out the time frame, me and Lucas, because this is like, long-term experiment here, uh, a week or two weeks, possibly even more. It's been more with us in some instances. You have what seems to be a flood of serotonin. Uh, and this is also backed by, this is backed by research as well. Uh, there is a lot of research that um, very clearly states that men with PSSD in response to SSRI um, have recovered from ciproheptidine. Anyway, what it does though is increasing serotonin and making you naturally make more of it and fixing the autoreceptor so it's not blunting serotonin response is you're in a better mood. You're in a dramatically better mood from doing that. So that's what I would say. Um, that is what I would say. Just be careful though because when you dose it, you will feel pretty drowsy and tired right away. So that's why you should take it before bed. Um, okay, how long after proper adrenal? Okay, you stretched. Um, yeah, how long after proper uh, a proper adrenal protocol do you start to feel better? Good question. Um, 
with the right chemicals in an adrenal hormone insufficiency recovery protocol, you will start to feel better in the first week um, because, because with the right chemicals, um, because you are giving yourself the things that are necessary to produce cortisol and aldosterone. Uh, cortisol is going to regulate your energy to an extent. Uh, aldosterone is going to keep you from dumping all your, your water out as well as all your salt out. That's one of the main issues in uh, having adrenal hormone insufficiency. That's why the fatigue happens, really. I think it's a loss of water and salt. And that's that's validated across the web, too, and, and, and adrenal hormone insufficiency experts, as they might call themselves. You know, these are hormonal doctors. And um, so, yeah, in addition to making sure sodium consumption is right, you should start to feel better pretty much right away. Uh, how long it will take to heal, right? Totally different question. Uh, how long does it take giving your body the right nutrients and doing the right dietary protocols and doing the right workout protocols and sleep protocols and stress protocols to uh, make to get your body producing aldosterone, cortisol, DHEA, uh, regulating salt and water balance on its own? Uh, you're talking about about a year. You're talking about a year, a, a year and, and maybe more. But the great thing is once you know the protocol of fixing adrenal hormone insufficiency, then you feel better pretty much right away. And throughout that time, you're feeling pretty good and you can get on with your life and get on with the debilitating fatigue and, and start making stuff happen. We have a protocol for that because I went through it and it was a ter terrible uh, period of my life. It's called the Adrenal Protocol and you can find it at livecortex.com. Okay, um, take on, what is my take on posters i can't read this take on ah oh man i can't uh, po po porters man i i, I can't I, I don't understand what this person's saying sorry um should theanine be dosed daily should theanine be dosed daily oh <laughs> take on politics oh my god until i can't even read my freaking writing um well yeah look that's always div divisive and it Polarizing, so I'd rather not talk about my take on politics. Uh, look, I'm a war vet. I carry a gun everywhere. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I like people who are about brass tacks and not necessarily c catering to your feelings. And so, draw whatever you whatever you can from that. I just I'm a real dude, and I've seen a lot. Um, and I'm I'm also uh, I also think a lot about policy and what policies might critically or logically be best for for majority of Americans. So that's my take on politics. Uh, should theanine be dosed daily? I would say if you have some sort of anxiety issue, I don't see a huge issue with it, with doing that. Um, Lucas from Ergogenic Health and BrainX tends to think that uh, flooding the brain with uh, essentially serotonin in that, in that regard, because you know it does increase brain serotonin, uh, might again desensitize this 5-HT1A autoreceptor and then make you not produce enough serotonin on your own, but no one knows the answer to that. So for now, as, as long as it is working well, yes, there is no liver toxicity or any otherwise safety issue with taking theanine daily, and I think it's a great compound. Um, next question, theobromine, GPC doses. Hey, Ryan, I've heard you talk about theobromine and alpha-GPC as a good combination. What would you suggest dose? Well, probably whatever we were talking about then, we, we mentioned the dose, but it changes for different people. My most recent dose on that, first of all, it gives you a, a good light stimulant effect with memory, like with working memory and functionality. So it's like really pretty nifty as a very simple minimal stack, works really well. I'd go with like 50 milligrams theobromine, 120 milligrams alpha GPC. That's what I would say. Um, let's see. Most sustainable weight loss strategy. Wow, okay, that's gonna take 20 minutes. But uh, to put it simply, you've gotta find your maintenance calorie number. That's the amount of calories that you can eat in a day and, and weigh exactly the same, okay? And the only way to track that is like my fitness pal, you punch in every single thing you eat and drink to include beers and wine eh, or liquor. Um, it, you know, like just like the hard boiled egg that you ate, everything has to be uh, put into it and then you weigh yourself at the end of the day. You'll find out through that experimentation process that you can eat 2,000 calories a day with your given energy expenditure and weigh exactly the same. The way then to lose weight thereafter is for five days a week, for many months, go 150 to 200 calories below that threshold. So you have to be really, really disciplined to do this. 
and do that five days a week. On day six and seven, one of the days, eat 100 or 150 calorie surplus, and then the other day, eat exactly at maintenance. Over time, you will dump fat off of your body. You're just gonna dump it off, but it's gonna take a long time. And guess what, here's the unfortunate thing. The most sustainable hormonal way to lose weight is to do it over time. So that's my strategy there. Um, yeah, it, it will work 100% if you, if you follow that. Um, cortex stack, good to stack with uh, triacetyluridine. Well, uridine's in the cortex stack, so it wouldn't really be all that useful. If you did dose it in low doses, like 25 milligrams of TAU, you would probably get a really good effect, just a compounded effect on top of cortex. I would also stack that with caffeine and a B-complex. Um, how to minimize Yohimbi anxiety. Well, that's a hard one. Uh, I don't know, high dose theanine, maybe rhodiola. That, that's hard because it's just, how do you reverse cranked up adrenaline and neuroadrenaline? You know, I don't know, maybe take some 5-HTP because they compete. Um, but I think that's only through the tyrosine pathway. So I, I wish I could answer that question. I'll look into that and see if I can do that on, on another nootropics. Um, 20, last question. Any experience with PRL plus coloracetam with caffeine and theanine? Yes. I've tried PRL with a lot of things just to experiment. I haven't had great results. Uh, that particular combination, you got to dose everything low. It's And it's really hard to dose PRL low because like five milligrams is the dose. What are you going to do? Right? You got to take a toothpick on the powder and then just gently sprinkle it on the scale. And when it reads three milligrams, turn the scale off so it doesn't trick you and shift back and forth. And you're like, what? what is the actual reading? Um, and with coloracetam, like five, five milligrams is the best way to do that. Um, caffeine and theanine, I can't remember a specific instance in which I had all those together, but I, I would theorize it would work pretty well and do the usual ratio according to the studies, 100 of caffeine, 150 of theanine, or 50 of caffeine and 100 of L-theanine. Uh, that's what I'd say about that. Thank you so much for listening and watching. This has been both episode 120, Cortex Lab Nootropics Podcast, and another Nootropics 20 on the channel. Guys, look, um, this weekend, I know it's payday, so I want to give you guys some deals on product. Number one, Cortex Stack. I can save you some money and get you a bottle for 26 bucks a bottle. You might as well buy two if you're going to do that. Um, coupon code is 5, F-I-V-E. Do that at livecortex.com. Powerful pre-made stack. You could also find the Cortex Double Stack on the website, which gets you two bottles at 24 each. $24 a piece, it's 48 bucks for two bottles of Cortex called the Cortex Double Stack. Uh, if you need my help on consulting and helping you to formulate stacks, figure out stacks that work, nail down stacks that'll just save you some time, listen, get on a call with me. Go book it now, livecortex.com. Uh, we got a bunch of different packages. We have a one call package. Uh, we have executive packages, go check them out. Uh, if you don't wanna deal with me at all and you wanna take your nootropics to the master class, to the expert level, inducing certain states on cue, knowing how to do that, that's the difference between people that are five, six years in, just go buy the nootropics master class. And I wanna save you some money. So if you need a coupon code to save you some money, I mean, I could save you like 20 bucks on that thing. Email me at ryan at livecortex.com, ryan at livecortex.com. Say you want to do the Nootropics Masterclass, I'll give you a coupon code. Same thing with the Viking Testosterone Protocol. Look, if you're a man and you want to take charge of your life and your testosterone and your manhood and your masculinity and your erections and your sex drive and your weight loss and your fat burning and your motivation and your focus and your resilience, which is what testosterone will do and also anti-aging, I respect that and I will help you do it by giving you a coupon code. I'll save you some money on the Viking testosterone protocol. We can get you scheduled right away and you can start taking the protocol right away. Do all that at livecortex.com. I know it's payday, so I wanted to save you guys some money. Go make it happen. And thanks so much for watching and listening. We'll talk to you next time.